Yo, what the fuck is good, y'all? It's your boy Bugs back with the Full Circle Podcast. I got my guy Stevie. Yo, yeah. you well, looking for a lighter? Thanks for having me, bro. Sir, are you looking for a lighter? I think I am, right? Do you have one? <laughs> How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. I'm here. I'm chilling. I'm alive. Niggas like me. Facts made it to the beach. Made it to the we beach. We are alive. Mm-hmm. That's something to be proud of. That's Even in today's world, right, bro? Yeah. Even when you gotta do those things, she don't fucking want to. Yeah, but um, that looks beautiful though. Cup of Joe. Should I go ahead and light it? Yes, please. Nice cup of Joe. So Stevie, tell the people who you are. Got my cup. What you do? Um, my name is Stevie C. Um, also known as Stephen Clement Jr. And um, I'm a I'm an entertainer. I'm a I'm a, a, a artist and I'm a producer, a writer. Um, a father, a dad. Um, you know. Oh shit! I I didn't even know that to be honest with you. Yeah, man. Not until the other day. Yeah. I think you mentioned something about it, and I was like, "Does he know he didn't tell me? <laughs> like, does he know he didn't tell <laughs> me?" Yeah, and um, you know, just a, a good a, a a a good friend of Bugs, man. We've known each other mm-hmm. for some time, and now you know, you know, um, no no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No. Uh, cliche but mm-hmm. things have come full circle facts yeah <laughs> yeah no cliche how do we meet we met at um did we meet at that cypher no we first met at the house of blues oh booze you're right yeah the house, house, of, house blues. of booze house of booze yeah um the through, my, through my brother yeah. yeah yeah that session yep interesting i forgot about that shout out to that scenario in that time in life because that was such a random day uh, when i tell you how crazy that was because I um I had only ran a couple sessions out of that studio at the time, so I wasn't too familiar with it. But um, but the owner, shout out to Sam Trocky, he was like not he was in town, but not in town for a session. Yeah. So he was like, okay, can you take this? It's Corey Clement. And I was like, do you know who that is? Right. And he yeah. was like, cause you, cause I think we we had just won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Literally. So he was like, it's for. I was like, he's like, I don't watch sports. I was like. All right, I'll take the session. I'm sitting here nervous as fuck. And then your happy ass with your smiling face walks up and I'm like, "Oh, this is going to be fucking amazing. This yeah, is going to yeah, be yeah. awesome." But um you showed us like a tour of like the uh the venue. Mhm. And he was like, "Yeah, we're going to throw a show here." The and potential like, that that place fucking had was insane. We did throw some ragers there. Yeah, we did. Absolutely threw some ragers. Thank it's you. A, uh spliff. Got you. Yeah. Fucking um but all good things come to an end. Things come together, fall apart to create yeah. some new shit. It's all full circle stuff. That's the point. Yeah, man. And now uh, I think, you know, we did a show together about three weeks ago. And, you know, we're not going to go too far in on it, but yeah, nah. that's how we're here. And it's like we're kind of withholding what we have in our heads right now, but we're just like, mm. yeah, we're, we're talking to you guys as uh, our, uh, I don't want to say our future selves, but... Facts. We're kind of like having a moment of just keeping it something close to the vest because mm-hmm. you want to keep that good energy, you know? That's facts. And uh, <coughs> we should tell <coughs> a little bit of that story, though, because that was a crazy situation. So I'm in Atlantic City on a Thursday, and at like five, <coughs> 5 o'clock, he calls me like, yo, can you drum for a set for me tomorrow? And I was like, I mean, I don't know the songs, but... <laughs> But yeah, send me the fucking songs and I'll listen to them tonight and I'll like I'll let you know if I can do that or not. And he sent me the songs. I was like, absolutely, I'll be able to do that. And the next day, this man was able to grab my drum set from two different locations on the way there. Met him in Atlantic City, didn't rehearse, did a 30-minute set of songs I heard two, three times, and we fucking I yeah. think we actually did rip it. Yeah. I, I would say so, mm-hmm. um, and that was only two pieces of a you know a five piece band because we didn't yeah. have all the guys around. But yeah, yeah, it was last minute. I literally knew about the show a month ago. Sorry, bugs, but <laughs> you know I dragged my ass, and I think I, it wasn't until the week before the show. I was like, yeah, I got this show coming up. I said, damn, uh, and I was like, oh my god, it's next week. Mm-hmm. And I called around, and I had a couple guys that I usually run with help me out for a second, but. You know, they were far away, um, and you know, I think 
the convenience of them being so far away made me say, you know what, guys, I, I, I appreciate what you guys did for me. Mm -hmm. I even I drove up there, I think it was like a Monday. It was like in Jersey City, which is like an hour and some change away. Yeah. And I just ended up calling the day before, like, listen, I don't know if I'm gonna do the show yet, but don't worry about it. You know, I'm gonna figure it out. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, man, it's all good. It's all good. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got off the phone with them, I was like, yo, Bugs. <laughs> That's so awesome, dude. But no, no, no shade to the guys that I was gonna work with. It just I forgot about mm. the connections I've had and yeah. literally was like, You are Atlantic City. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm right disrespectful there. as hell right now. Like Yeah. Disrespectful was, as hell. And I wasn't trying to be. Like I was that. more or less like I'm good, like, I'm good actually. I was like, yo, thank you, bro. Yeah. I was like, yo, like, Bugs runs AC. Like mm -hmm. I was like, what am I doing? I was like, I did <laughs> not hit here. Bugs. And then I hit my guy Cordell. I was like, you're in Philly. I'll grab your ass. Let's, let's, let's go. Yeah, and he was like, it's no at 7 o'clock. I was like, dude, I will literally be there on the boardwalk at that time. Yeah. It was just crazy timing. Match up. So, yeah. So, that was that was a gnarly situation. And that's what I mean. A moment like that, that's where I'm like, okay, we got to lock in. Yeah, we had to, man. Like, there's always that combo of like, yeah, we'll work. And what's it been? Four years? Five years? Four, four years? And we haven't linked really yet. That's because we're both artists. And... um. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. You lucky. I was gonna reveal like a Pokemon card, but I didn't do it. That's All not right, my, that's not my right, job. Yeah, that's not your job. That's not my job. But I want to put a big old B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, like, yeah, man. Um, we're both artists, and like, you know, I think now it's just like, like I said, full circle, man. And now mm -hmm. we're just literally, you know, grown man stuff now. I'm not gonna curse. Grown man stuff now. We're looking at <clears> things differently. I think as kids, we're just. You're so focused on my stuff blowing up, my stuff blowing up. So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. teamwork makes the dream work. And I think that's where we're at now. And, um, you know, I think we're rebelling against the algorithm now. That's what we're doing. We're going yeah. and creating our own and um, getting our genuine fan base because that's what's most important. You know, we know, we know it's rigged, mm -hmm. um, but that's a fact. It's really just, you know, I think not getting bent out of shape about it and, you know, um, mm -hmm. finding creative it's about ways. consistently yeah. creating too. Yeah, just consistently painting your finding story. creative ways. Yeah, to painting engage an audience. Story. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like everything that I was doing years ago was for everybody else, and I just recently started. Like you know what? Let me just get a bunch of shit for me out, and that's what I why I feel like I have that foundation that we were speaking of before this. So now that I have a foundation, yeah, it's like I think that I can view it from a more mature perspective as to what I really want from it which is to travel and do it and get paid for it every fucking time. So so there's ways to go about that, and investment is one of them. It's something that I've been battling, which which is the algorithm. But fuck that. We're going to overcome that. And I probably just got demonetized for saying fuck. So there's that. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so, so there's that's what we're up against, dude. Listen, <laughs> that's I mean, yeah, in a sense. Um I was going to piggyback off what he just said, but he kind of took it right out of my mouth. But at the mm -hmm. same time, it's like, Jesus, man, like, pause. That was ridiculous. Like, <laughs> but it, but that's the thing. <laughs> at the end of the day, it still boils down to honing your craft and finding your sound, if, if it's music, if it's paint, whatever it is. And if it's all of it, doing all of it to, like, the degree of you want. Because there is – that saying is – um. what is it? A master of one is a master – a master of – well, see, I, that's why I, I think I was going to say I kind of lost my train of thought for a second because, you know, obviously. Like, but, yeah, yeah, it's back. The joy to Jeffrey. So, um, <laughs> no diddy. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to say it's always fun to watch the, the creator or the producer go from the backseat to the front mm -hmm. and become a creative in and, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and a, and a um, space where you're noticed because mm -hmm. you're already a creative. But, I mean, like. No BS, you guys are behind the scenes, so nobody sees it. Nobody knows mm -hmm. who uh, certain people are until they make themselves known. And it's almost like an unwritten thing to not tell nobody you did something for somebody. Like, mm -hmm. you kind of just sit back and, you know. Yeah, but you're right. Them credits are crucial. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of credits that I haven't been mm -hmm. credited, to be honest. And the homie discount isn't cool. So, I mean, if you're one of those people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because that's what that sounds like to me, you know. And yeah, it's 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 because that's that's the that's what we were speaking of the balance between art and business. Because business isn't 
I had this vision that like to be a good businessman means you have to be a shitty person psychologically because at any any good business deal you're getting the up. You know, you're getting fifty one percent, they're getting forty nine. But in my mind, fifty fifty, you know, mm-hmm. that's just a psychological idea behind it. But the business is a whole different thing, obviously, than mm-hmm. than what we do when we're alone in the room making the music however we create it. It's a completely different aspect. So if you can put on the different cap, just like sometimes you have to be polite in public versus when you just want to when you're at home you can just say fuck shit. You know what I mean? I think what it is is like you gotta wear you gotta you gotta wear your hats and not be exhausted. You can't show the exhaustion of wearing the manager hat, the A and R hat, the artist hat. Yeah, yeah. You gotta just kind of smile because you are wearing a lot of hats. I know I'm wearing Mm -hmm. a lot of hats, even though like nobody knows. Like you go by different. You know, sometimes some people I know some. (coughs) Some people might go by different aliases to wear their other hat, but like some yeah, people yeah, might yeah. go by their that's real an self. artistic decision yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's what it. You know, as a real person, like you know, doing this, mm-hmm. you notice that you can't just make music. You have to have something else <clears throat> with you to make you even worth listening to. Honestly, yeah, something that comes with you. Is that not- was one of the first things I studied when I when I was like, why is this like when I was younger? Why is this person famous? Because right. their music sucks. Right. And then I like did a little research and said, "Oh, they're funny as fuck." Mm-hmm. Like sometimes people are just funny people, and they get the connections that they sh- that they need to at the right time, and people like them; they're likable. You know, there's a lot of reasons that go into it other than just the music being good. So we were talking about before we started on the thing. We were like, you kind of create a character for yourself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and or uh, be the ca- or just you know be the character. But that's ha- that's but sometimes an explanation. That's how I always used to explain it. But Brandon is but. Bugs is Brandon with an exclamation point. Facts. It's just all my stuff out there. But see, like Kanye wants to be just Kanye sometimes. He doesn't want to be yay. Yeah, well that's And it's like, bro, but like That's the artistic thing and that's that's where like alter egos come in and that's like Slim Shady and Eminem. We fuck with Slim Shady more than Eminem. But then like, do y'all fuck with Marshall? Not really. Nobody really fucks with Marshall, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> People like Eminem has a big backing, but people really fuck with Slim Shady because Marshall Mathers is now. I don't know which which version of Slim Shady would you say was Marshall? I don't even know. I guess because that's the character that he had. There's a lot of shock value saying crazy shit in those early raps. Like, yeah, he rapped good, he rhymed well, but, but closet- the shit that he was saying was out of this world, and people weren't 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 saying it. So it was shock factor. It's basically Marilyn Manson words. So that's like how I view it like that. So Slim Shady's alter ego was that just to like smack people in the face with that. But then what? So like people think that he just stopped taking pills and he started like. Did make, you like Eminem more than Slim Shady or did you like Slim Shady more than Eminem? I mean, I like Slim Shady, like Slim Shady for sure. Slim Shady was definitely the fun song, right? Yeah, but there's some Eminem songs that I like. Yeah, I was going to say. But, um, I think I like Eminem more. Yeah, but, but, the, but the new ones are like. I said, I'm sorry, mama. Yeah, like that shit's amazing. Yeah, but I never meant to. <laughs> but um, but like this, uh, but like the newer shit is like it's just crazy how mm. how that mm. can yeah. show in the sense of like the alter egos and the artist. Because mm. what he didn't he just he just dropped the Slim Shady's back. He did just drop. I think a he's new dropping one. an album. Yeah, so he so we'll see how that goes. But but yeah. that's a that's a good concept for him to be able so to be aware that people miss Slim Shady finally. And he's like, maybe give us a piece here and there. I miss Eminem. I don't think like I, I, Slim Shady. I mean, Eminem is still Eminem. <laughs> still Eminem. Marshall Mathers. I don't know. It's the guy with the beard. I think. Who's? I'm sorry, Mama. Who's that? Is that Marshall or is that? Eminem? I think that's still blonde hair. I think that's so. Slim I think Shady? that's Slim. Yeah. That's it. It's he. I think he dropped that as Eminem, but right. like, I mean, his name is Eminem. So Slim but I think Eminem. that was Slim Shady. Okay. As far as who created it. All right. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. But not like, obviously, Eminem's one of my fucking fans. Just named him in the fucking show. He's one of my biggest influences. Lil Wayne, Eminem, Missy Elliott, Ludacris. Can I say Mines? Yeah. Besides, besides, obviously, you know, I grew up watching my dad sing. He, you know, he was on the Apollo, and I watched him. Excuse me. That was my... <laughs> <coughs> what the hell was that? I hope it got it was like up. It was like... <laughs> It was like a like a whoopee cushion. Yeah, it was like a fucking. For my throat. It was like a like a Paul, frog, man. like a like a frog, hell. like a frog. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna turn that spot up. 
What? No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I'll put a beep. Oh man. <laughs> um, yeah. Besides my pops, I think somebody that honestly, and I mean like really, like really changed the game. Obviously, and you know, I don't, I don't think people give him enough credit. I think it was Wiz Khalifa for me. I think honestly, like him in that that era with uh, Spitter and like mm. that 2009 era, that high music. It was positive music. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was positive music. It was grinding music. It was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was relieving stress. Yeah, it was it's talking about some how real the stuff. Times change like, like that. they were like you. You can say whatever you want. They were talking about real stuff in there, mm-hmm. and they were teaching you how to get paid if you know, if mm-hmm. if you know, you know, yeah. and, you know, like, mm-hmm. and they were teaching you what to do with you know, your money in a yeah. sense when you have less and things like that. That it happened to King. <laughs> Yo, I can't do this right now. <laughs> I can't do this right now, yo. <laughs> All right. I that's, think call, that's, that's a coffee, a beer and a coffee. coffee. That's a beer and a coffee for you, dude. That's, that's, that's a good coffee. <laughs> they're like burps, but they're like, I'm like talking. And they're not like, they're not even like giving me a notification. They're like, here we come. Yo, I'm done. <laughs> that's so good, dude. That's so good. <laughs> like, yo. Can't even stop it. It's, it's like, the combo of the it's the combo of the drinks for sure. Oh, Anthony man. Davis is always on the ground, it's always dude. Falling. He's always on the same. Him and Embiid. It's, when you're that tall, me and my boy are gonna work on a comedy bit just called Joel Embiid's legs. <laughs> like he looks so tired every time he takes a step. Just watch his talking. his God God bless his knees. Like it's crazy. You got to think about that. Pause, but you got to. <laughs> <laughs> no, did he? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> oh but that's just fucked up. What were you saying though? Who's your uh, other inspirations? Uh obviously I said Wiz. I'll say other than that, I like Sir Michael Rocks from the Cool Kids. He was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, <clears throat> who else? I mean, if we want to talk mainstream, I guess you could say uh, Chris Brown, Beyonce. Yeah, I don't know. I don't notice it sometimes, but until the song's done, I'd be like, "Yo, that's low key Beyonce's flow." Like. Back in the day, like uh, say my name, you know, I'd be, mm. yeah, she's low key a rapper slash singer, and nobody like talks about that, but like mm. B's like, of course she can sing, but like, well, she later on started. She can sing, that. rap her ass off. I uh, I when I started making music, I stopped listening to it because I didn't want like that influence. Yeah, with, yo, without me, without me being aware. <laughs> Real that, shit. Like, oh, this is a song I fucking heard. Heard, on the radio. yeah, yo, yo. Other than that, I'll listen to like. I listen to like jam bands and shit. Yeah, but I make so much. I just listen to my shit. I'm like Kanye sitting on this couch, listening to his, his like listening yeah. to his shit, sitting back. I, yeah, just play my shit. The way studios are evolving to like mm-hmm. being in your living room and your like mm-hmm. just your own personal space. Yeah, you got to be able to make it. You have to do it on your own, like because it's expensive being a musician. Like so expensive. Um, yeah, people don't really understand that. Like equipment alone is so expensive, but but you pay for it one time. Yeah, and, and you, if you're teaching yourself, you're like, that's a lot of time. That's, yeah, but... You got to fall in love with you it. Got, yeah, you got to learn how to edit and do all that shit if you want it to sound good. But when you literally get involved in it in a way where you're obsessed with it, it's dangerous. It's fun. It's dangerous. It's so much better than play, like playing, getting stuck in playing video games Facts. or something, though. It's educational. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's therapy. Mm-hmm. They're children. All my songs are my babies. Like in their own way, yeah. Like there's a piece of me, like a, a for real yeah, piece. Yeah. What? They're my babies. <laughs> they're my babies. I was too stoned for that. What? They're for they're for real. Like, uh, cause that's how I was telling you. Sometimes when I pick the live performances that I do, I'll just open a file, close my eyes, scroll, and click open, and it'll be a song from like six, seven years ago that I'm like, holy fucking shit, I remember it. And it's just, and isn't it funny how when you hear an old song, you just remember all the lyrics like a train track. Yo, I like, turn in LeBron sometimes. Yeah, and, I, and, and I'm word I, by word. You you don't know you know it until you start doing it. But I be looking crazy sometimes. I'm like, I messed that word up. But it's all good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> fix. Uh, I actually like that word better. Like, it's, it's, it's the music from back in the day. Like, oh, yeah, oh, oh. The, what what I was saying is how it can like how a song from six years ago that you wrote is exactly what you're going through right there. Yeah, and somehow it hits harder. And the timing, and and that's how you know a song's timeless as well. Uh-huh, if uh-huh, you have an uh-huh. old song that hits six years later, f- five, four years later, you're like, okay, that means this song can drop at any time. Yeah. And that's like how I know I have like, that's how I'm going to 
needle it down to the songs that I'm going to play with y'all when we do the list. Where are we session. at right now? Like, because there was a time, did you feel like that Playboy Cardi sound was going to take over and it kind of didn't? That Game Boy sound? Oh, yeah. Um, where are we right now? We're still in the stripper girl rap, but it's fading out and we're super, I can't, I knew it was going to happen, but we're into the country rap right now. Yeah, we are. It's pretty weird. I'm not but, mad at it. Um, I'm not either, but I knew it was going to come. But that's because that's what I'm saying. My whole idea is this country there track. needs to be a new instrument created for there to be a new genre at this point because synthesizers and sampling, we've connected every genre in every way that we fucking can. Well, that's country trap. So we needed, there isn't, there was a new instrument created last year. It's a fucking weird one. What is it called? I forget what it's called. It's fucking weird though. It's basically just a combo of every other instrument though. But, but like synthesizers, for example, that's like the last real, cause it's digital. That's like the last real new thing that we've had. And that's why it created so many different genres like dance music. And I think country's going to take over. Okay. Like that and well, R&B is going to come people, back. People, but like, well, yeah. country has been, been the biggest genre yeah. the whole time. But if it, if they get the rap crowd into country, Oh, it's over. And rap, a lot of rap crowd, to be honest, like, I mean, I don't, I don't listen to any of it. What? Any of like new rap at all? Like, I'm not gonna lie, I indulge in some of it. Like, I don't even, I don't really know. I mean, I still don't listen to music, to be fair. Yeah, I know what you mean. So I don't, I don't like listen to shit for the sake of influence that happens subconsciously as an artist. Mm. But um, but I don't think i would if there's, some, there's some cats i would that, still just listen to dance music there's some cats that we came up with that have really good music and i'm giving like 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 Syph, uh mm. this guy named uh what's his name oh my god re money he's tough mm. uh who else yeah i listen Cell to rp i listen to our people our but, people yeah. are tough like our kids mm. are tough like mm. our, i said our kids we're not kids anymore. we're grown ass men mm-hmm. but like the you see music keeps you young but like mm. literally our people we came up with through H like you know HD when we were mm-hmm. all you know uh, getting our shit together at Pops you know what yeah. I mean we all kind of came up together mm-hmm. I feel like our 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 little pod of people shout out to everybody doing their thing yeah we do I make like this listening to y'all. shit so yeah it's, it's it's so it's like it's just a marketing Cell thing. Blocks, it's just good. a marketing thing at this yeah. point and when one of us goes I mean it'll be eyes but but we all know that like it it's it's gonna take for real the person who cares about the community to make it for it to be to do something it's the kids though they they're into this like ignorant stuff and we you know i i mean not to be like i don't I like i mean well no like, we were too but it's I'm what about they're to say yeah, i love ignorant like, stuff we had a lot of ignorant stuff too yeah. when, you, when you think about like there's always been bad music like in 2004 when yeah. you hear some of the biggest hits from 04 we're right. like you gotta be like what the fuck right what? and that's what i'm saying but at the end of the day though like there's a crowd for almost damn near anything so you know, honestly, it's just like no. I I respect the new stuff coming out. I don't think it's I don't think it's that bad at all. It's got it's a play time and place for everything. I just think that. Well, no, that's the thing. No, the thing is, the new shit isn't bad. It's what the radios and shit play, and it's. I'll say we came from an era that was conspiracies. I think that there's something to it. Oh, they're definitely pushing it on, dumbing us. down. Yeah, be- playing the dumb yeah. songs, repetitive. By the way, they're sampling sampled samples. Over and over and over again. And we're hearing songs that were hits when we were young. Now they're sampled in a new way. And it's like, now I get what my parents were like. That's not it's even. It's coming back, though. My parents were like, that's not even that song. It's coming back, though. That's not even their song. That's somebody else's song. Like, they couldn't con- grab what sampling was. But now that I'm older and they're sampling the sample, samp- like, dude, three times. And this is what Prince was scared of. He's like, dude, like they're gonna start sampling samples, and if the record labels own those samples, they're just recycling music that they already own. So it's just a way for them to keep making money. So now for artists like us who make original shit, we won't get that radio play because they're paying advertisements algorithm for that to continue to rake in money. It's fucking gross. Yeah, it's gross. I agree. It's gross, and and not to mention some of the Sonics are just not pleasant. Like Kanye was right when he mentioned like the Sonics, like 432 words. There's a reason that that's known as a peaceful vibe. You know what I mean? Mm. When, when we're listening to these frequencies like that, like think about the music in the 70s. Like the microphones were not that good, but the less automation straight into records, dude. Right. Like not like not many chop ins, if anything. And then if they chopped, they had to literally cut tape in half. Like. That is a different form of soul into the music that we are missing and shit. So that's a part of the reason I don't listen to to it either because, and it's so weird for me to say that 
because I make the music, the genre of music that I don't listen to sometimes, but I make every genre at the same time. But you see what I mean? So like you're saying by using auto tune, it's kind of the same effect. I'm taking the soul away mm-hmm. because I'm using the technology that I guess I don't need. And I get mad at Chris Brown when he uses auto tune. I get mad at Beyonce when she uses auto tune. I get pissed actually. It's, it's less like, noticeable, on, dude. You don't need it. It's less noticeable, but I'll say like, but people say that to me, and I'm like, what do you mean? I don't need it. I need that shit. You need less of it. Mm-hmm. I say, but I think you're good. I think you're fine. I think your crowd's gonna be your crowd. Word. I think you know I can have an opinion, but at the end of the day, yeah, your crowd's yeah. gonna be your crowd. Your yeah. crowd's your crowd, and uh-huh. I think that I think that like people, and that's based off the car- the personality of you your character yeah bro your character not the character like i mean not the alter ego but but if you create an alter ego that's what i'm saying shock factor does work listen if you get like two hundred fifty thousand likes i mean that shout out to you if you're getting 300 likes though Mm -hmm. you could sell something to 50 or 60 people yeah and get your stuff off and keep it moving and people those 60 people are going to keep you alive in this game and on top of that i feel as though they're going to they're going to keep sharing you you're going to get more fans but I think people are lackadaisical to buying stuff, you know, but mm-hmm. if we're going to be real and be practical, there ain't nothing wrong with having 400 people like your video. You just better be selling to at least 100 of those people for something that's worth, you know, 40 hours a week mm-hmm. for four weeks straight, you know, because obviously, you think about it, you can be paying your bills. Yeah, whether it's an event every now and yeah. then or a video, like something that you drop, consistency like that, yeah. I yeah. truly think the algorithm could be broken if people don't pay attention to it. If you can, if you could use the algorithm for what it is, I it's marketing. That, I hate that word. I it's hate marketing. The thing. I it's hate, all I just marketing. We're getting a free platform it. to literally put. There go my burp again. We're getting a free platform to put just our put stuff up a up, counter, <laughs> right? <laughs> to put your billboard up, right, and to mm. essentially sell your product. You're not famous yet, but like you get a hundred people to like it. You better be selling at least 30, 30 people yeah. something for at least thirty dollars, twenty dollars. Like make your paycheck. Like make it make sense. Don't mm-hmm. don't don't look at it like Yeah, because you're cle- at that point you're not you're, at that point you're clearly giving people like something that they're down to watch and you're entertaining. There are people that make bracelets and they can't get a hundred people to, to, to you know, and if you can mm-hmm. get to like their bracelet on their page, I've seen cake pages, cookie pages, um what other page can you name? Um Tattoo pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a lot of pages, right? We are at a stage right now where we're getting hundreds of likes, mm-hmm. comments, engagement, mm-hmm. more than your cookie page. No offense to your cookie page, yeah. but like, no offense to your tattoo page, but mm-hmm. you're making enough to pay your rent on your tattoo page. Yeah. Think about that. Somebody's literally like making, you see, you see a professional tattoo artist. Get and 70, they would pay for the viewership that we're getting. He's getting 75 likes on his tattoo. That is a masterpiece, to be honest with you, but yeah. like- and then he might get a, a few books out of that. But he's month. surviving off the business. Come on, shit. man! Why aren't you doing it with your music? F all that algorithm stuff. Literally mm-hmm. pay it no mind and try to like literally like focus on the fact that. Not saying that you shouldn't have your own website, but Instagram is a piece of your website mm-hmm. that gives you a link to go to your other websites. Mm-hmm. That's all this is, and stop making it about your the the, the, the celebrity you're going against because we know we're turning our mm-hmm. idols into rivals. They have a freaking army behind them. Mm-hmm. And they're literally just pouring cash into it. It's rigged. So take your winnings and sell to your people. Bring it back to your hood. Celebrate. Mm-hmm. But I think whoever's supposed to find you, they will. Because I think that at the end of the day, you can't hide. Like It's almost like that Motley Crue movie. They start off in this bar. And literally, the bar starts as just like a bar scene. You know, They do their thing. And I think week after week, their line got longer mm-hmm. to see them. Yeah, you can't skip that part. Like we got to take over a, a you, you, and mm-hmm. I think that sounds amazing to people. They think I want to get on tour with this person, and I'm gonna tour the world with this person, and blah, blah, blah. No, turn, but you have to do it. Yeah. Turn up your area and make it so people are like, when you throw your open mic, they're like, yo, can I get on the bill? Can I get on this? Can I get on that? Mm-hmm. And watch what happens. I guarantee somebody that's literally somebody is gonna come and be like, well, we'll, we'll give you money to be a part of that. No, well, yeah, that's that's what happens. But um, head down mentality. But that's why like. That's why I focus more on events because the streams are one thing and that doesn't really bring revenue in, but throwing events does and merchandise does. Yeah. So the more events you throw, the more merch you th- sell. That's that's the my idea yeah. behind it, at least locally. So that's why I've yeah. been successful locally, but I reached a point up until like about 
eight months ago when I realized, okay, because out, out of the pandemic, probably that if I didn't get demonetized for fuck, that word definitely made it demonetized. <laughs> Fucking um, out of the pre-demic, I, I'm bugs. I'm the guy who connects stuff. I knew there was a, because you got to think that was three years. So now we got young bulls who were 16, 17, who are now 19, 20, yeah. 18, ready to like perform and shit that never performed before. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yo, inst- like, let me connect the scenes, throw open mics from Philly to here. And then I threw showcases from the best of the Smart best idea. of those. Smart. And I connected it all. But I ran into a problem that I ran into every other time I connected scenes, which I didn't have an idea to fix or switch. So I took a break. And that is, what now? I connected the scenes. Everybody knows each other. But I'm building for me, it seems like, because now the community is just the community and it's not spreading among the people like it should be type thing. So it's not that things aren't selling out because we're selling out basic every no, not basically everyone we're selling out, filling, packing the places, but it turned into the same people. And when that happens, people started throwing shows with my lineups. Like I would throw a show and then that would be the the same names would be on a show two weeks later at another spot. Right. And that oversaturates what I'm doing. So now I have to make an adjustment and realize, okay, I can't do this. Wait, but now these crews are beefing. All right, now I, you know, I can't, and you can't control all that shit. Yeah. But, um, so it's a psychological switch that I had to make. And I was like, you know what? I'll just take a, take a break. Let me figure out, reassess what this is. And I, and it's what we're talking about. It's what we're talking about off the podcast type shit. That's what I had to reassess. And it is about homie deals. It's not a real thing. You know, I can't, can't do that. I think it's just and, about making your show and, better than the person that's trying yeah. to mimic what you're doing, mm-hmm. and up up in the ante every single time. Well, yeah, that's what it, that's also it too. So that's why so I'm waiting. So that's why I'm waiting. Yeah. yeah. So and 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 guess what? Since I stopped and that everything, to be honest with you, like kind of died. Nothing yeah. is happening for real. Because like you were the guy, and I yeah, and I realized and that I used for to be real. That guy. So, so now that power, you like if there, there's there's like pow, power in it, but. But now I realize, like, okay, so an event is it is a, it's church. MC. It's you're church. It's a barbecue. It's not master ceremony. An open, but yeah, it's it's yeah. That's they need, but they said. need you. Mm-hmm. You were the master ceremony back in 2016, 2018. Mm-hmm. Was that the freestyle was that what we did? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But I've been doing this for a while since like 2012 was the no 2011 was the Camden Cipher. I'm talking about the one on South Street. That was that started 2016. Yeah. 2015, yeah. 16. So that's your background. So it's like the ciphers, yeah. Yeah. That smoke looks so fucking cool right now. You don't see it? I don't want to touch it, but yeah, I see it. It's like uh, kind of looking like, uh, it's like so a cloud cool. where you're yeah, flying in the air and shit. Yeah, it's that's fucking awesome. Yeah, but the, that cipher was awesome too because Freeway popped up. Yeah. Like, like, that's the thing. When you're like, Philly fucks with Jersey too, by the way. Like Philly love when you're a person from Jersey and you kill it with music. Philly fu- shows so much fucking love. It's crazy, but but to go from like the ciphers and everything that I did do to have fucking freeway pull up to the cipher and rap that that was like only the I I think like the third time we hung that was out. ridiculous actually yeah and and young you didn't Chris, plan for that to do that young, no like it just kind of happened that day. Wow. And and young Chris was there. Obviously, all the crew was there, but they were outside, like hoodied up. So, like after the cipher, when I walk out, and like this dude comes up and dabs me up, like, "Yo, dude, you killed that good shit. Don't ever stop." Type shit. And I was like, "Thanks, dude." Like kind of nor- like everything. And I take two steps away and walk away. I was like, "That was fucking young Chris." Yeah. I was like, yeah. "What the fuck?" Like, and I was like, you, "Things like that, you can't." I've never told that story. That's- things things like that, you can't like plan for or do and that's how you realize like okay like no i i'm tapped into the i'm tapped in you yeah. know to the soul and the real aspect of what the music is because it's connecting to people on that barbecue church type thing the master of ceremonies but all that is is bringing people together and i'm aware that that it just so happens that that's the only way to make money in the shit too to me that's so, your moment so because of that i can give money back to an artist but listen that's your moment of not having imposter syndrome anymore you can always mm-hmm. go back to that and rem- remind yourself somebody of that stature told you, yeah, don't ever stop, please. Like, yeah. as like, I'm 10 years older than you and I, I mm-hmm. like what you're doing there. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah it's kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. giving you the battery in your back. And yeah. to be honest with you, it's, it's also a moment of how do you know you made it? 
how you know you made it when you're uh, talking to young Chris on South Street and he came to your event? Yeah. How you know, you, you, made know you, made, you made millions of dollars? Yeah. Like, like which one is it? Be humble yeah. and understand and mm-hmm. really like really take it in. Like, yo, like your friend from up the street who's got something to say about what you're doing couldn't didn't do that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, how you yeah. know you made it? Freeway came and was just a peon and and and, and the crowd I'm just, yeah, just like, watching. Like, yeah, like what? He just you know pulled what I mean? up like, and rapped you know what I mean? like just chilling. Like, mm-hmm. nah, bro. Like, just you know, just a just an observer, just an OG, just like what the youngins doing. Yeah. Like, what well, we 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 you know we doing our thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bugs put this thing together. We were trying to you know get our shit off. Right. You know what I, mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, we know you're the you're, you're the goat, but like, yo, this is what I do too. Like, you know? right. <laughs> but so like you know what I'm saying? But the how you know you made it? So like literally like, I'm telling y'all like. I'm about to say young artists. We're still young. I'm only 31. Mm-hmm. But like, don't ever feel like, you know, this this stuff is like that far away. It's always that far away. Mm-hmm. Like, no, seriously, it's this far away. No, it's here. It's it's where you're at. So like, like that's yeah, the thing. Like, it's, it's, the music has always that been part, about- That part, it's here. It's the moment. That's, like, that's, literally. That's the real reason why I make every genre is because I want to hug everybody. Yeah. Like, if you don't like rap, I know you like rock. If you don't like rock, I know, you know, so I try to make every genre because I want to have friends with every ki- kind of person. And if I can do that and successfully mesh that and bring them to a show, then these rap fans don't know that they like rock music. And when they see Cal Black live, they're like, holy shit, I didn't know that this is like what happens. And for the, just for example, those crowds meshing as well, they're like, people have judgments on crowds and shit and the types of people because. When you grow up, especially, it shows in, like, we're just, like, fucking people. We're herds. Like, we like to, what's the word? Um, Not primitive. Fuck. What's the word? We're, uh... Are you saying follow? Tribal. We're tribal. Okay, okay, okay. okay. We're tribal. So, everything that, like, a kid in seventh grade listening to heavy metal, mm-hmm. you best believe he's dressing like that. Yeah. Like a skater. Skaters, dress, a sk- surfers dressing like a surfer. I wore a big shirt. I was the... Wigger, because my shirt was a little too big, but no, that was like it's all misconceptions. Uh, yeah, I think but, that's what you think, you know, mm-hmm. and 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 then you know you kind of walk past somebody and you can feel their judgment, but like no, I didn't feel that way. Mm-hmm. I feel like sometimes black people, you know, even though we 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 can sometimes say to to ourselves we invented style, white people can invent style too, and they've had their own style for a little bit of mm-hmm. time. And and that in that two thousands era when it, when punk was a thing before it came back to today, yeah, like. Avril Lavigne, you know what I mean? Those big jeans that everybody's wearing, it was a thing a while ago. The stuff that, you know, we're bringing back. That's what I mean. In like seventh grade, you could tell tell the music that the kids listen to Yeah, by by how they dressed. I was going to say too, like, um, the whole live rendition of what we do, a lot of people don't do it. We're kind of already, and I'm not just tooting our horn, we're coming correctly when we do our shows. We don't just give you a DJ set with some songs and hey this is my mm-hmm. music so i think like you know in a sense i'm picking back off with you like I'm, I'm i'm basically commenting on what you said you said mm-hmm. people they're not expecting it from us underground artists to mm-hmm. come up there with a band backing us and yeah just you know not playing the song behind us mm-hmm. and just jumping up around mm-hmm. and i think that because they expect it but they don't like you know what i'm saying yeah. that's why when you get off stage and i get off stage we feel like we kind of go through the same thing yo yeah. yo yo hot 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 like mm-hmm. what's what's the next thing you got going on mm-hmm. because like they probably didn't expect it from the underground artists but I, and i i I'll piggyback on that again i think a lot of y'all need to, to start paying attention to when you go to a concert um your favorite artist doesn't just have a dj you know he doesn't pay attention look at the background there's instrumentation going on back there yeah. amongst the mp3 that you hear and they did. They they gave you a show. Your favorite artist, all the way to whoever the heck you listen to. I'm not yeah, and that's what I want to do anyway. I want to perform. I want. That's yeah. why I like doing this live performance that I just is with my with my Carney and um, Cal. I never played the drums and rapped that song. I fought, first of all, I've only drummed and rapped one time in my life. But we never did that song together live like that. That live performance was the first time we ever fucking did that, and it sounded like that. In Philly. So, yeah. Yeah, that was dope. So like it sounded like that. So like it kind of just blows my mind. Every time I hear it, it gets better to like Send it realize. To me. I want to like, hear that because nah, I, yeah, I don't I have you. I, I got, got like you. a couple of videos. Well, you got the you got the full show, the yeah, quirky yeah. show. Shout out to the quirky show. But you got the full show, but it, we Carney just dropped the And then the, the lights y'all had behind it, the mood y'all set. I was at yeah. the show, right? You're talking about, right? No, the live performance. The live performance oh, of, on YouTube? that we just dropped. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about cuz honestly But that was that was the performance. Yeah, I was yeah, I was I came to a show about a year ago. At the fire. Oh no! It wasn't the fire. It, it was, was close self, to the fire, self-employed. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Self-employed. Yeah, self-employed. self-employed. Um, 
Yeah, and that was it, awesome. We yeah. ran the sound there. Like, that That was all us. Yeah. Bro, and it was dope as hell. Like, mm-hmm. it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, I wanted you to perform, but... But, man, f- that, like, bro, real rap, that was crazy. Like, yeah. I, I just sit back and honestly, like, you had enough artists perform a successful event. Mm-hmm. point I'm making is, though, y'all, like, when I saw y'all, I was like, they got something here, y'all. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, this pink in the back. Mm-hmm. Uh, pink cow, and light blue cow black on this on this synth organ type thing and <laughs> you on the drums and carney i was like bro i wanted to grab the mic so bad and just freestyle and have fun with y'all like uh-huh. literally bro like that's a vibe yeah it's 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 yeah yeah i think i think that cal and carney would agree that like it's the most fun when we're all together like it's because that's, pe- that's what peaks and valleys is too yeah. So, because our side project is the jam band, which is just improv. We don't even sing or say nothing. We just fucking go. And that stuff's hot. Yeah, it's fucking fun, yeah. too, bro. So, there's ways that we can do that consist, Like, just like you said, Motley Crew. It's more than just like, oh, we're doing another show at the same spot and only 20 people are going to come. Mm-hmm. What? The, how else is it going to build? Mm-hmm. Do you want to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for marketing? Or do you want to put in some more hours and ground footwork and walk around? So I think as far as that goes, you're right, consistently throwing events. But from my perspective of like how I connected things and yeah. stuff like that, taking a break definitely made sense. So there's a, I think there's a way that I can combine the show with an open mic yeah. with the, so that we can get some, some new people every time. Yeah. Wow, we still have the backing there. That's solid. You yeah. know it's going to be a show show regardless. Yeah. God forbid a couple of the open micers aren't seasoned. Whatever oh, that means. I on that? Yeah, I, yeah. I would say, I think our job is just honestly, and it's so... It's, so, it's just so, vibes. <laughs> our job is literally to make good music. Yeah. And if that if we do that, you'll want to come. Yeah, that's I it. think literally, I'm speaking for like general, just like to our folks out there, our artists. If you ever like, yo, what is it? How do I do it? Literally, projects, EPs, good song after good song after good song, and they're gonna just be like, you know what? Let me go check out such and such this week, and he's gonna be in such and such, and it's gonna happen. Your time will happen, but don't, just be consistent. Like when somebody makes cookies all the time, and you don't buy them, but like you see it on Thanksgiving now, and you're like, actually, yo, I want, and they, and they try something else, and that it actually hit your algorithm and on on the thing now. You're like, mm-hmm. Jones, like, all right. So how do I order it? Like you got to just be consistent. Yeah. So I guess so when you get the like, it'll be shown more and shit like that. I don't know, man. That shit's just so confusing. F the thousands of likes is where that anger comes from, oh, buggy. Yeah, okay. So yeah. So you're right. You're That's right. where you're that like, comes from, that, buggy. No, yeah. That's where that comes from. We're talking to our hundred. We're talking to our Instagram likes. We're I talking get talking to the twenty out of a hundred. Yeah, I get a good consistent maybe <laughs> one eighty two hundred consistently. Sometimes mm-hmm. three forty five. That's dope to me, you know. But I'm keeping it a hundred. I'll get my little 240. That's dope. There's people out there that I, I think make good music. They're getting a thousand likes. Good for you. But I think to the people I'm talking to, if you get your little 240 like me, man, you should be trying to sell something to at least 60 people for about 50 bucks. Because mm-hmm. you you do the math. Five times six. Mm-hmm. What's that? 330? So we're talking about $3,000? Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Something, Figure it out. Yeah, product worthy. So. You know what I mean? Or th- sell something to you know 100 people for 30 bucks. But like, yeah, man, look, take your winnings and don't look at it wrong. Look at it right. Like, that's dope. You got a hundred and some people to like your stuff. Mm-hmm. All right, now it's time to sell something to them. And mm-hmm. by the way, while you liking this, like do a little cutaway, like how you do your thing. You you know, mm-hmm. if you like that video, like, share, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's, it is annoying when they stop and do that. They're like, if you like this video, like, share. I skip so it. I, I yeah, just double time, tap and skip 10 annoying. seconds. <laughs> it is annoying. It is annoying. But I think on IG as well, like if you I like this video, you know, drop an emoji. If you like this video, mm-hmm. the song's in the bio. If you like this video... Um, a t-shirt to support me and my band is in the bio for 10 bucks. Just put it at the end of every video. Yo, you're supposed to be, if you support me, 10 buck t-shirt in the thing, we're going to, we'll send it off to you. It'll be at your front door in about one or two business days, but yeah, mm-hmm. I got a 10 buck t-shirt in the, um. Yeah, if you support me, donate to Liana. You feel me? Like as an artist, sell something t- with your product. Don't just sell your music, man. Mm-hmm. You can't rely on streams these days. Well, I feel you. No, that's definitely, um, just some adjustments. Cause like, but, but honestly, you, to become the artist that you want to be, though, you have to, so you do have to, you can't be caught up in that sometimes. You have to just focus on the music. Mm-hmm. So, like, find yourself first as mm-hmm. an artist mm-hmm. and whatever else that psychologically like like means. If you, to you. But, man, make the people move, but man, F mm-hmm. that, man, stop worrying about you going against Universal. You're talking about an artist getting thousands of likes. You're going against Universal. Yeah, fuck that. You're going against uh-huh. the Rockefellers of the damn, like, you're tripping. 
They're sampling sample samples. Find your dude. people. Get in the, get in their get in their DNA. They don't need you. They will sample everybody. And literally, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will is. sample you actually. But um, but so what do you have coming? We got the project. I'm thinking about the name right now. I I've got a name, but you know, follow me on Instagram. My name's Stephen Clement Jr. If you don't know, but mm-hmm. um. <clears throat> Yeah, we got a project coming out soon, and I say we because it's not just me; it's you know, uh, collective. My brother's on it, mm-hmm. Cash Capri's on it. Um, who else is on it? I, I think those might be my only two features, actually. But mm-hmm. um, I've worked with people like Sife, um, my uh, producer Matt um, over at Milk Boy. He's amazing. Works with a lot of you know dope ass dope ass artists. You know, what I mean, he he can go down the line of who he's worked with, um, but. Um, yeah, shout out to Milk Boy for, you know, the sound, man. And I'm just being mm-hmm. honest. Shout out to Milk Boy. And, you know, I just feel as though right now I'm I'm making the best music I've made in my entire life. And I'm happy about it. And I think it's some of the reason why I'm able to make connections with, like, so many dope artists. Because um, at one point in time, I mean, I'm not going to say it was, it was bleak. But, like, I'm going to be real. Like, it was never this easy to make good ass songs like how I'm, how I'm doing it now I was always in my head mm-hmm. trying to make the most you know I think abstract type of songs I listen to so many abstract artists like Frank Ocean mm-hmm. Childish Gambino um, Kid Cudi Mac Miller and you want to mm-hmm. almost be so different that you want people to like you so you're just like trying to figure out how how can you be different and then you, you know later you rewind I mean and you fast forward then you got uh, you know of course you know I'm not the biggest fan, but you got the Drakes, the J. Coles. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not biased to anybody. Mm-hmm. But I just feel as though sound changed and the Playboy Cardis came, little Uzis. I think honestly, it's more or less finding your sound, like Bug said earlier, and not trying to copy anybody, do your own thing. But I think um we gotta watch what you listen to. Like I, I love that he doesn't listen to anybody, but sometimes it's annoying because he doesn't listen to anybody. <laughs> because you don't want to be influ- you don't want to be influenced by anybody. But mm-hmm. I think honestly, like yeah. But that's really that's a, there's a dark side to that too because I said this on the last podcast. It took away the thing I love to do the thing I love, mm. which is like a paradox in itself. Like why? Like I love music. It's the best thing in the fucking world. But you gotta feed your ears the right way. Yeah. And that's what I mean about the frequencies that we're given versus what we find mm. versus what's naturally found. And we all have that thing where I found that artist before they blew up and then they blew up and you're like, fuck that artist now because everybody likes him. It's a weird thing that happens in our brain and everybody feels that because like you want to hold on to it like it's yours. Like I knew about it first. And you have to because literally like you got to let people know I was or I was dope enough to know this artist was hot before you even thought of yeah. it. Yeah. Because like and it wasn't an algorithm. Yeah, I, I found don't mind it. That. I think yeah. that's dope when people do that and they kind of like show me about somebody somebody showed me Wiz Khalifa. I can't give, you know, shout out to Sharif. He was like, mm-hmm. I think you should listen to Wiz. I was like, who was the name? And might have made fun of his name in the beginning then I'm starting to bump his name. Well, that's a form of love language too. Like yeah. that's a that's definitely that's one of the nicest things people can do is like share like Yo, this food is really good. You should try this recipe. Or, yeah. Yo, this this song. I think you would really enjoy this song. And if not, I do. Yeah. So, so here, so, like so, so here's some pleasantries for your ears or something. That's like the nicest thing you can do is feed somebody or give them some good vibrations. Feed their mind like that. You yeah, know? sharing is. I think honestly, and inspire. Honestly, inspiring is honestly the highest form of human you know contact. I feel as though. Mm-hmm. But and that and 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 I achieve that to the utmost with events with mm-hmm. shows because it's like I get to hug everybody, I get to sweat on everybody. We we all rage and sh- it's like we show what we feel through the music that mm-hmm. we're performing in front of people that everybody individually brought because you, like literally it's not hard if you have 15 artists and like yeah that sounds like a lot of people but when when you make sure, I'll just give you guys the rundown. Fuck it. When you connect your sets into one one MP3, mm. you trim five four minutes off. Mm. So if you have, you can only do one song like a three minute four minute limit. Fuck that. If you have two two minute songs, connect that into one MP3 and perform two songs. Mm-hmm. That's my vision of it. So, but that's you understanding. That's yeah, ten years in. Yeah, yeah. So 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 people doing. So when I do this event, it sounds like that. So, okay, now you have 15 people. Yo, all these people performing only bring two people. Like, I only want and need you to bring two people. Now there's 30 people because I'm bringing 100. So now we have 150 people there. Facts. 
And, and that's, that's my math behind it. And now all these new people are like, oh, okay, I see what's happening. And it, and it builds from there, you know? But, um, so I just have to, I took a step back. I, we figured it out, like I said, and I have figured it out. So the next show that we do is going to be a big one. It's going to be at the end of summer. I will we're just going to put it that. out there. Like, hmm. we're looking for funding. So if yeah. anybody's a sponsor out there, you watch these videos and things like that, we're mm. definitely, you know, business, you know, savvy young I mean, men. yeah, we'll take the funding for well, sure. You know, we would love to sit down and talk <laughs> yeah, business. Yeah. But I think that, like, you know, me and my project, when people ask me what's going on with that, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, some type of backing management not management backing mm-hmm. um but i'm not i'm not i'm not pressed to release music that i feel as though is like i think honestly if people yeah you gotta wait for the right you, time and, for and, it yeah and, and it's not there's no right time i just think that like if you're gonna drop your music have the funding to do what you gotta do mm-hmm. and you know basically and that's to get everybody to have a an opinion because that's all you want everybody to do is have an opinion you suck you're great you're mm-hmm. you're you and, and, and you're rich regardless. Yeah. Who said that, little baby? Yeah. He says I'm hard, and he says I'm horrible. I'm rich regardless. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. yeah, bro. I think give everybody an opinion, but honestly, you can't do that if you don't fund your project. So mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing. I think have the conversation stirring, and you know, take the negative with the good, because honestly, with a negative review, a, a positive's coming right behind it. Somebody's gonna be like, you know, oh, you didn't like it? I thought it was different though. I thought it was hot. I think people. Uh, the, the, I guess the number one person that just did that, what, two, three years ago was MGK, mm-hmm. dropped that rock album. And, 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 you know, people that truly like rock were like, poser. Mm-hmm. And the people that wanted to give MGK a chance, like me, I was like, mm-hmm. He's fire. always made rock It's music. fire. I was like, it's fire. <laughs> like, the transition was obvious from the beginning of his career. Like, he always Obviously, did, Wild Boy's a rock song. Punk Are you shit. Yeah. yeah. Like, what? And you didn't see that from the whole time? All right, whatever, hater. Yeah, he's been doing, like, that was the obvious route. You know, but like he's, there's obviously going to have a way to connect it all. Whereas, and that's not an alter ego. Mm-hmm. That's whereas Eminem and Slim Shady, the beard is weird. My, <laughs> my whole See stance, what I did there? The beard is a little weird, man. My whole stance for everybody. <laughs> just, I'm not coming on, on his beard. Damn it. I like Eminem, bro. I'm not he's going to comment on your beard. Yeah, Eminem's Eminem. going to fucking hate me now. God damn I'm it. I'm not going to comment on your beard, bro. Um, my whole. Thing, I mean, I it's just a. Re- it is a real thing, though, with the artistry and what people just enjoy and prefer to hear, and and um, even the lyrics, even the song with with Rihanna, it's a, just gonna stand. It's about him abusing a girl. He's like, if you ever leave again, I'm gonna tie you to the bed and set the house on fire. Just gonna stand there and let me burn, like that. Those lyrics are like that's still shock value. That's but it's in a new version. It's been said before in conversation, and he said what people have has already said yeah, yeah. in arguments, yeah. and it was dope because I've heard it before, and he put it in a song. Mm-hmm. It's like if somebody would be like, "You got the right one." Yeah, it's like, yeah, I've heard that one before, and like they put it in a song, like I don't know who mm-hmm. you're talking to, but you got the right one today, and like yeah. or somebody says, "You are not that guy" in a song, like <laughs> you're like, not that guy. I'm be like, yeah, I, I heard that. like, but yeah, shock value, yeah. Yeah. It was more of a cliche, and, and, and if you know, you know, because uh-huh. if you heard a toxic argument before, you've heard a toxic argument before. Yeah. You know? Like, come on. Like, if you've heard a, if you've heard an abusive relationship before, you've heard <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. that before. I know. But this is what we're talking about, <laughs> what they put on the airwaves and shit. Yeah. They're not putting no 432 words. They're not playing no fucking yeah. uh, Andre 3000's flute shit. Yeah, no. He tore the game up with that, by the way. But, um... But yeah, we uh we gotta wrap this John up. I'm gonna definitely have you on again. Yeah, we'll be, we, uh, we'll, we'll be back. We'll have a lot of live performances on. Do you have anything you want to tell the people? Anything Look, you want to say goodbye? I'm a, before I before I leave, I'm a, I'm gonna get to this. Ready? Before we leave out, mm-hmm. love what you're doing. Put your all into it. That way, you can't look at nobody else and blame anybody else. And when you get your money, don't just spend it on frivolous stuff and be looking like, why does this person got more of a chance than me? You're not investing in yourself. So look, I'm going to put it like this. I'm giving this free game. Don't turn into the angry, grumpy rapper. Mm-hmm. Because I watched yeah, the you TED- don't have to quit because you turned 30, Yeah, and, and listen. Like- <laughs> I watched the TED Talk, and I know a lot of us, you know, we're old school, so we're like, why am I doing this? Why am I paying? You know, why am I? You don't want to pay for likes. You don't want to pay for followers. But if you, can, if you have a business page and you can market yourself and put some money behind a targeted audience to make your brand grow, do so. Um, because, like, honestly, it's a game, and I'm going to be real. Like, the TED and that's talk, what the funding that we're talking the about The TED Talk I listened to, it said basically this. You know, everyone's playing the game, and you're going that way. Do you really want to be the only one not playing the game? Like, you could try to reinvent the wheel. You can. 
You could break the internet. Reinvent and I think kind of people like Kendrick Lamar are showing with Not Like Us that like there is still conscious bangers out there. You can have a conscious banger. It doesn't have to be ignorant and be a banger. It could mm-hmm. be still conscious and a banger. So you could break the internet with good music. And I said that earlier. Our mm-hmm. job as artists, make great music. And you know, honestly, people are tired of certain things anyway, but... Yeah, like, for everything we're talking about, you still got to worry about the music. Yeah, like, worry about the, the music, like, man. Like, as far as, like, the marketing, like, we could do a shitty gimmick thing and market it the right way and blow up like that's that. that's here today and going tomorrow. But, but, and that's also... So, like, why don't you just do that same thing, marketing thing with the good music? Mm. Like, it's the same exact thing. You know, Not Like Us is going to be like... Yeah, honestly, I'm going to be real with you. It'll be here 10 years from now, and it'll be that time where we remember when we're 40, we're like, remember when this dropped? And it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be like that. So you watched it on Amazon. Yeah, saw the live show and shit. It's okay to make conscious bangers and still give a damn about lyrics and writing and and artistry and 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 and, and uh, delivery. One of the best deliveries delivery people in the world is Nicki Minaj. Stop being so monotone in your rap. You can go ahead and be animated. We're gonna love it. Two Chains was very animated. Loved the way he used to rap. Mm-hmm. Eminem. My hair longer than your girl. I'm mean, a girl. girl. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but that's all I got to say. Don't be the old grumpy rapper, man. Get in the game and literally like stop trying to reinvent the wheel if you're having trouble getting your attention. I think it's like mm-hmm. it's cut, it's dry. You can literally YouTube how to become a content creator because that's what we are sadly now. Um, I don't like the way that you know creators have become content creators. It's just creators. a different way of chopping our stuff up. Yeah. But. That's all it is. But, yo, we will be back. I, yo, bro. My guy. Thank you for having me on. Much love. We'll definitely do it again. And, uh, yeah, dude, got stuff dropping every fucking week, every other week, as I always do. So, okay, man. just stay tuned in. Don't let the algorithm win. Like I said, like, uh, what, what's the thing that you said? Do a drop? Um, hey, guys, like, comment, subscribe. All ah, that stuff. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I might use that as the main class. Yeah, you gotta do that, bro. See y'all. Love you cool guys. Cause that's really what it is, man. We can't be too cool to advertise. You know, Pepsi pays so much money for us to see that shit all the time. That's literally how you gotta look at yourself. You're Pepsi, bro. You're like, nah, I don't wanna pay that fucking five dollars. Fuck that five dollars. <laughs> and Pepsi's putting out billions. That's a fucking parlay bet right there. <laughs>